Do you have any idea how many useful CSS snippets, data view queries, and template scripts there are for Obsidian? Me neither. But I found some of them which I think might be useful to you. Today, I will show you four. Let's take a look. Occasionally, some of our files might have incorrectly formatted front matter, and if we don't notice it immediately, it can be cumbersome to find those files later on. Here is a dataview.js script to make this easier. I found it on the Obsidian forum shared by the user Holroy. While I don't even pretend to understand all the details, the script basically checks if any front matter exists and, if so, whether any parts of it are faulty. If a problem is found, it categorizes it as not valid, no YAML, or empty. As a result, we get a table with the linked file name of nodes with bad YAML code. The status and the faulty code start and end positions. As you probably know, Obsidian lets us change how we want to see the tabs of multiple open nodes. By default, they are aligned horizontally. And if we click on this little arrow and change the setting to Stack Tabs, they get aligned like this. With the following CSS snippet, we can adjust the tab appearance. I found this on the Obsidian forum posted by user A. Rehan, probably, maybe. In any case, thanks to him, I can share it with you now. As always with new CSS snippets, we first go to Settings, Appearance, and scroll all the way down to the CSS snippets section. We click on the folder icon, and this should open the local folder containing the snippets. Create a new file and give it a name that makes sense to you. For example, format stacked tabs dot CSS. Make sure that the file extension is CSS. If you don't see your file extensions, click on View, Show, and File name extensions. Now open a file and copy the CSS code into it. Go back to Obsidian and refresh the list of snippets. Enable the format stacked tabs one, and that should do it. If it does not, you may have to restart Obsidian. Once activated, the CSS definitions will be applied right away. And now you can easily play around with them to make your stacked tabs look the way you want them to. Whenever you change the CSS file and save it, the changes will also be applied in Obsidian right away. Did you know that not subscribed viewers create more than 80% of the overall watch time on this channel? If you ever enjoyed my videos, please could you do me a favor and hit the subscribe button? It helps the channel more than you know, and the better it does, the more high quality content I can create for you. Thank you. Did you know that you can create hoverable fields in any node and customize their appearance with a CSS file? Me neither, but I learned about it on Reddit from user OnionOK776. Okay These fields can have multiple levels, which makes them convenient for navigation, and each of them can then link to a specific target. Here is how to set it up. First, we add another CSS snippet to our snippets folder. I showed how to do this in chapter 2. If you skipped that one and need some guidance, you can jump back there. Inside the CSS file, we find a block called gradient color selections with 13 predefined gradients. Each of them has a name, which we will need later, and a color value for the background color of our fields. Now don't get confused by this because background color in this case is actually the font color because the fields themselves are transparent. But don't worry, it gets very clear in a second. Once the new snippet is activated, we create a new node. Inside this node, we add a simple callout and give it the name of one of the predefined gradients, for example, blue gradient one. Then we can define the structure using a simple bullet list like this. As you can see, these are just links to existing nodes in my vault. By using proper indentation, we can quickly create any navigation tree we want. If we don't like how it looks, we can define and pick a different gradient style. And back in the CSS, we can change the background color for blue gradient two, for example, save the file, and right away, we have a different text color. Additionally, we can adjust other attributes, such as padding, font color, and field color, for example, to a medium blue, or whatever we prefer. Here's a bonus tip from an earlier video, which I will link to somewhere up here, and of course, you will also find the link in the description. If we want to hide the properties section in this node only, we can use yet another CSS snippet, and then add the field CSS classes, to the front matter with the value hide 
properties, giving the node a cleaner look. If you are like me, you like making lists. Many of them might be very long and have multiple levels. With such long and deep lists, it might be a bit of a challenge to keep track of what belongs to which level. The next CSS snippet helps us to overcome this challenge by adding bullet threading. And this snippet I found on Reddit, where it was shared by the user Seashore and Horizon. Thank you for that. As always, we add the snippet and activate it. Again, the detailed description for doing so is in chapter 2 of this video. Once active, we can create our bullet list. Here's an example. And when we hover our mouse over a list item, we get a highlight of the path from the top level to this respective current item. The appearance of this path can be adapted in the CSS file, of course. I hope these quick tips and tweaks are useful for you. As always, if you have any questions, ideas for other tips, or requests for topics to cover, let me know in the comments below. If you found this video even remotely helpful, perhaps drop a like, subscribe to the channel, and ring the notification bell to make sure you won't miss the next videos. For more Obsidian-related content, check this growing playlist with tips, tutorials, and complete vaults for you to download. And that's it for today. Thanks for watching, and see you next time.